If you watch this channel regularly, you'll know that I enjoy messing about with antennas and I do quite a bit of portable work. And I've been thinking about uh, a, a portable antenna that would be perhaps easier to transport, easier to put together and perhaps quite efficient. And it was an idea that based on something which I think I've read about or seen in the past but forgotten all about it until I got uh, an email recently and I thought gosh do you know I've never tried that I'm going to try it and that's what I did and that's what I'm going to tell you about in this video. Well it's one of the last nice days I guess of autumn I don't know perhaps not uh, we're in mid-September now and uh, there's a bit of blue sky up but it's not too warm actually. Well at this point the camera battery ran out. <laughs> By the time I got the battery recharged, which only takes about 20 minutes, it started to rain. So hence I'm indoors. Before I start this video I should explain that um, on the previous video I was recovering from quite a heavy cold and I missed out a key edit. Uh, I said that the magnetic field in the southern hemisphere is vertically polarised and the magnetic field in the northern hemisphere is horizontally polarised, which is totally wrong. What I intended to say, but didn't actually edit it and put it into the uh, video, was that it's quite possible that Brian ZL3XDJ is in a vertically polarised magnetic field. And it's equally um, possible that somebody in the Northern Hemisphere could be in a horizontally polarised magnetic field. And then that would mean that ZL3XDJ would possibly have an advantage of using a vertical antenna and somebody in the Northern Hemisphere in a horizontally polarised magnetic field area would have the benefits of using a horizontal antenna. It's, uh, it's just hypothetical and it was really down to trying to evaluate or try to understand why a vertical um, at Brian's QTH in uh, New Zealand seems to work far better than a vertical um, in the Northern Hemisphere where I am. That was the bit that was missed out. So what are we going to look at today? Well it's an idea that W6QR sent to me. Um, i put a picture up now of uh, his uh, antenna outside his house, a vertical antenna with radials, two radials that are made from tape measures. And I thought that was quite a good idea. I think I may have seen it before a long while ago, but I've completely forgotten about it. So thanks Bill for sending me that, uh, that idea. And we know that uh, an elevated vertical works better than one on the ground. You get a significant improvement in uh, performance because you reduce the earth losses and so forth. And uh, I thought, well, this is quite a good idea. I'll try it out, and this is what I did. I thought, well, I'm going to try um, Bill's idea and uh, see how it works. So this is the subject matter of the video today. Now, what are the advantages of a tape measure radial or radials? Well, I suppose the most obvious thing, of course, is that they're variable. And it's uh, quite an advantage to actually be able to adjust the radials because, you know, we're never quite sure whether radials are the right length or not. And uh, if you can adjust the radial quite easily without cutting and sort of putting bits of wire back and so forth, um, it's very easy. And of course, it's very portable because when you're finished, the radial just folds up into a very small package. You can virtually put it into your pocket. And I suppose also the radial has got quite a large cross section, much larger than the cross section of a uh, simple length of wire. Um, exactly what the benefit of, it, of that is, I'm not quite sure, but um, I think there's probably a benefit, perhaps uh, particularly if you ground mount it, because whilst, whilst um, elevating a vertical is certainly an advantage, if you decide to mount it on the ground, as you might do when you're out portable for various reasons, then I think the coupling between the uh, uh, tape measure and the ground is going to be much better than the coupling with a couple of lengths of wire. I quickly grabbed a tape measure from the kitchen drawer 
in order to modify it. Not the most popular thing to do, but this is all in the cause of technology. And I can carry it in my pocket. No tangle, fast deployment. Wow, I could have a 22mm wide radial. I now need an antenna to try this idea out. Let me show you the antenna that I'm going to use. Uh, the antenna I'm using is the Yaesu ATAS 25. Let me show you how it uh, goes together in case you missed my earlier video. The ATAS 25 is a base loaded antenna designed to fit onto a camera tripod. You adjust frequency by either sliding the coil up and down or rotating it for fine tuning. The whip section comprises three aluminium sections which screw together. When finally assembled, the antenna is just over two meters tall. Now we need to have a method of connecting the tape measure to the base of the antenna. And I used a crocodile clip. Let me show you how I assemble it on the tape. Well, the first method I used was to solder a short um, wire with a crocodile clip on the end to the tape. Um, at the end of uh, tape measures, you've got a little sort of thing to grab hold of. And uh, this was bare metal. The only problem um, was I was worried about was the fact that there's some rivets at the end and it's quite loose um, at the end of the tape. In actual fact, it did make good contact, but I wasn't uh, entirely happy with it. I then purchased a uh, tape measure which was somewhat larger, got a wider cross section, and uh, I, what I did with that was to actually drill a hole through the tape measure, um, put a bolt, a nut and a, a sort of locking um, a washer uh, underneath it and attach the uh, croc clip that that way that that is a more positive way of doing it and then I just turned the tape over um, and scraped a bit of um, uh, paint off the back of the tape just to make sure I got a good connection using a, uh, a meter to check continuity. Here's the antenna set up now the tripods around about uh, were well just under two meters tall it's probably about 1.75 meters tall and you can see the tape going Away. I put it on a chair so that it was uh, above uh, above the ground, not resting on the ground. I just wanted to see what the how the elevated radial will work. I'm only using one radio at the moment. That doesn't really matter too much because the single radial works quite well. If we go in close, you'll see that the uh, uh, the crocodile clip there clipping the uh, tape onto the uh, uh, negative side of the antenna. And we've also got a line isolator, which I find quite important on the coax feed there. Quite a neat setup. Now, one thing that I did notice was that the length of the radial is a lot shorter. The optimum length of the radial is a lot, sh lot shorter than you would expect normally. And uh, when I say the optimum length, I mean the length that produces the best VSWR. And in fact, the setup now produces a VSWR of uh, about 1.1 to 1, it's uh, yeah, nigh and perfect. Come back to the reason for that uh, a bit later. But anyway, that gives you some idea of the setup of the uh, system. It means to say that it's quite, uh, quite easy to uh, set the system up quickly. And uh, initial tests uh, have uh, been quite encouraging uh, using reverse beacon and 5 watts in on uh, 20 metres. Uh, the typical distance is around about five or 600 uh, kilometres. Uh, there's uh, a couple at uh, 1,000 kilometres, but this is, this is uh, just after midday, so you wouldn't expect Super DX. But anyway, so far, encouraging. Now let's take a look at a test I did with the antenna mounted on the ground using a radial on the ground. Uh, again, um, some anomalies with the length of the radial. Anyway, let's take a look. The tripod I'm using has got extended legs so it makes it uh, somewhat more stable than a smaller tripod they telescope out. Made by Manfrotto, I think. Well, there's the Zigu 6100 
um, connected up to the antenna and uh, there's a Spanish station coming through on CW at the moment and uh, got the little uh, um, Morse key there from uh, MFJ the other one you can hear in the background, the station in the background is a stateside station, K2. Um, you may not be able to hear it, it's, it's quite weak, but it's working on the Spanish station. Anyway, let me take, let's take a look at the um, system. Uh, you can see I've got the uh, tape measure connected now, and if you look you'll see the tape measure is not that long. And that's the interesting thing actually, is that I found that the tape measure only needs to be around about well just over two meters long for 20 meters that's just around about a tenth of a wavelength um, and i think that really demonstrates the fact that when you're using radials on the ground um, they're nowhere near as long as uh, you would traditionally regard a quarter wave to be i mean a quarter wave on 20 meters is uh, five meters long <clears throat> this is getting on for about half that even a bit more than half that but uh, it gives uh, a good VSWR. And the whole uh, antenna system uh, into, sort of into tunes, if you like, interlocks. The, um, I find the best way to adjust this is to have the tape measure either fairly long or fairly short and then resonate the area off for a dip. And then you can then fine tune the VSWR by extending the radial out um, as long as uh, is necessary. As I say, it tends to be um, somewhat uh, shorter than you'd imagine. You can see the shot there, bottom of my garden here. But that's the system. And of course, it doesn't take up much room. I like the idea of the um, tape measure because, first of all, it's adjustable. And secondly, it doesn't tangle. It takes up no room at all. How's it working so far? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. Um, I don't for one minute think that the tape measure adds much to the performance of the antenna, although there's a lot more cross-section than you would get with a single thin wire on the ground. But uh, I think the jury's out on that one at the moment. What I, what I do like is that it's, it's such a compact system. And I must admit that I like this ATAS 25 because it's so easy to tune. I mean, on the um, Zego X6100, you've got a VSWR graph, and that works very well. I find that's, that's good. If you, um, wherever you've tuned the uh, transceiver to, the center of the graph is the frequency you're adjusting your transceiver to. So you're looking for a dip in the center of the screen. And uh, you do, do have to remember, of course, do turn the ATO off first of all. Uh, turn the internal ATO off and then do a graph. And then it, uh, you can see exactly where the antenna is resonant. Let's say it's one S point down on, on a full size vertical. That's not bad. I, I'm, I'm going away for a long weekend um, next weekend. And I was looking for something to take. And I think I'll probably take this with me because it's so easy to set up. Now, there's one more test I want to make, which could be quite interesting. Let's have a look. The Yaesu ATAS 25 is quite adaptable actually. I found a way of perhaps using it on a camper van or a motorhome or even your vehicle. You know, a lot of uh, motorhomes have got fiberglass glass roofs, so this just might be a way of using it on a fiberglass glass roof. I've got a uh, motorhome, a uh, small motorhome, and it's a, a van conversion, so uh, it's all metal. But the problem on the top of the roof, it's got corrugation, so I can't make, I can't put a mag mount on it because it doesn't make enough contact with the surface. So here's what I did. I uh, clambered up onto the uh, back of the van and I pushed the tape measure along the van for about, I don't know, two meters, I suppose and then connected it to the ATAS 25 on the roof of the van. And it worked extremely well. I got a good match and I made a few contacts. So if you've got a fiberglass uh, motorhome, this just may be the way of using the ATAS 25 on a motorhome. Obviously, you're not gonna drive along with it, but push your tape measure along the roof 
and uh, mount the ATAS on a uh, little tripod as I've done on the roof of my van, it works quite well. And it also works quite well on a normal saloon car. I mounted it on the roof of my saloon car with a tape measure pulled out and again it worked very well. I got a quite a good VSWR so I was delivering power to the antenna. So it's quite adaptable. I'm sure if you've watched this video the way through you may have thought of some other ways of using the ATAS 25. Maybe making a better job of it than I've done. I'm sure there are other ways of using it but certainly the tape measure is quite an adaptable way and one of the things that it did show me was that the length of the radial is actually quite critical. Now why do we get a better match when the radial is quite short? Well I think there's two reasons for that. If it's on the ground then you expect the radial to be shorter anyway but also in order to get a good match, in other words to deliver power into the antenna we need a low VSWR and I think what's actually happening is that because we've got this radial that can be very quickly adjusted we're actually feeding the um, antenna off-center it's an off-center fed antenna because the radial is shorter than you'd expect that means to say that we've actually moved the feed point if you imagine it's a dipole we've actually me me moved the feed point away from the center and as we move the feed point away from the center so the feed impedance tends to rise and what we're doing is we're actually shortening the radial to a length which is shorter than we expected we're actually moving the feed point along and we're raising the feed impedance and therefore we get a good match so there we are anyway if you are one of the sort of guys that goes out portable and if you want to set up a quick portable system then the Yaesu ATAS ATAS 25 may be just the thing remember it's just over two meters long so it's quite efficient it's actually longer than the um, mobile the electrical equivalent of it which is the ATAS 120 I think it's actually longer than that so it may be a bit more efficient Anyway, I hope this video has given you food for thought and uh, as usual, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for your support on this channel. Don't forget to press the subscribe button. All it means is that when a new video comes up, you'll know about it. There we are. And I hope you'll be happy to know about it. Also, thank you for your support in the shop and also on our website. Much appreciated. We do carry an incredible range of products now and uh, if you're looking for something that you need for something then and you can't find it then pick up the phone give us a call if you're looking for a new transceiver a new amplifier whatever also give us a call or have a look on our website don't forget we do part exchange so you can save your money some money there we'll be happy to help you out in the meantime as usual thank you for watching this video thank you for your support and i'll look forward to seeing you in the next video Bye for now.